Hey, what's going on? My name is Leif Farneson, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about high-protein diets and determining whether or not they are bad for you. So although research recommends a high-protein diet for both building muscle mass and for preserving lean muscle mass during periods of fat loss, we must consider the potentially detrimental effects of a high-protein diet to our health. So many vegans associate a high-protein diet with poor health and for good reason. According to Harvard Medical School, health conditions linked to a high-protein diet include the development of high cholesterol, a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, weight gain, increased cancer risk, and kidney disease. Now, these concerns are valid, but as we're going to learn from the research in this episode, they are specific to a high animal protein diet, not a high plant protein diet. So let's begin by analyzing the effect of protein on high cholesterol and heart disease. Now, by definition, a vegan diet is cholesterol free. There is zero dietary cholesterol in plant foods. As such, plant-based diets have been proven to lead to a significant drop in blood cholesterol, thereby reducing the risk of our number one killer, which is heart disease. And even though your body needs cholesterol to form hormones and digest fat-soluble vitamins, your body can produce all the cholesterol it needs from raw materials such as fat, sugars, and proteins. You do not need to consume any dietary cholesterol. Furthermore, a 2010 meta-analysis conducted by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine confirmed that a low-fat plant-based diet substantially reduces, uh, reduces cardiovascular disease risk. Concerning weight gain, over 100 years of metabolic research has proven that energy balance is the main mechanism that regulates weight loss and weight gain. A high-protein diet in and of itself has no impact on weight regulation. The only way that you're going to gain weight following a high-protein diet is if the extra protein calories you consume put you into a caloric surplus, which means that you're consuming more calories than you burn every day. In the NIH AARP Diet and Health Study, which is the most rigorous study of diet and mortality ever conducted, researchers observed the diets of 500,000 men and women over a period of 10 years. After compiling their data, the researchers came to a simple conclusion. Meat consumption is associated with an increased risk of dying from cancer, dying from heart disease, and dying prematurely in general. This conclusion was made after controlling for other diet and lifestyle factors, thereby excluding the possibility that people who ate meat also smoked more, exercised less, or failed to eat their fruits and vegetables. The researchers hypothesized that heme iron, which is the iron found in blood and muscle, is largely to blame. Heme iron generates cancer-causing free radicals and has been linked to heart disease. Plant foods contain all of the iron that you need in the form of non-heme iron, which doesn't generate the same cancer-causing free radicals that heme iron does. Furthermore, phytonutrients and phytates in plant foods have been proven to slow down and even stop cancer cell growth. Regarding kidney disease, high animal protein intake can have a profound negative influence on normal kidney function by inducing a state called hyperfiltration, which causes a dramatic increase in the workload of the kidneys. Now, this isn't such a bad thing if it happens occasionally. If you have healthy kidneys, you already have quite a bit of built-in reserve kidney function, which is why you can live with only one kidney. But if you consume animal products, then you are constantly forcing your kidneys to call upon their reserves, which taxes your kidneys over time. In 1987, researchers first discovered a correlation between those who ate a plant-based diet and better kidney function. They first theorized that this was due to plant-based eaters consuming less protein overall. However, more recent research has proven that your kidneys appear to handle plant protein very differently from animal protein. Within just hours of consuming meat, your kidneys are forced into hyperfiltration mode, whereas consuming an equivalent amount of plant protein causes no observable stress on the kidneys. 
In fact, consuming tuna fish can cause your kidney filtration rates to jump up 36.3% within three hours, but consuming an equivalent amount of protein from tofu places zero strain on the kidneys. A 2014 study from the Chinese University of Hong Kong analyzed the effects of soy protein versus dairy protein consumption on the kidney function of 270 female subjects with diseased kidneys. The researchers found that the soy protein helped preserve kidney function. So why then is plant protein beneficial to kidney function while animal protein is detrimental? Because animal protein causes inflammation. In fact, in a study conducted at the University of Internal Medicine in Italy, researchers found that their subjects' hyperfiltration response to animal protein disappeared when they administered a powerful anti-inflammatory drug along with a meat-based meal. So if you want to have healthy kidneys, you can either follow a vegan diet or you can take anti-inflammatory drugs every time that you consume animal products. In conclusion, decades of research have clearly established that a high-protein vegan diet does not contribute to high cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, weight gain, kidney disease, or cancer risk. So that's going to be a wrap for this episode. If you found value in this episode, please take a minute right now to tell one other person about the Vegan Gym podcast. We're on a mission to help 1 million vegans get into the best shape of their lives because we firmly believe that the more healthy, fit vegans there are in the world, the faster veganism will spread. So please help the animals, the planet, and other people by sharing this episode. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, keep challenging the freaking status quo.